Hi, in this video we're going to look at callables and so this is just a little bit of terminology. So what is a callable? Well a callable is any object that can be called using the parentheses operator. That's really all it means. It means that you can take an object, you use then these parentheses after the object name, potentially with something inside like parameters or without, and then it does something. It makes a call. Now callables will always return a value. The value could be none, but it will always return a value. So things like functions and methods, those are callables. But it goes beyond just those two. There's a lot of objects in Python that are callable that are not, you know, technically functions and methods. To see if an object is callable, we can use the built-in function called callable. There's a built-in function in Python called callable. You put in an object, you pass a parameter, an object, and it will tell you whether that object is callable or not. In other words, can you put that parentheses operator Essentially, can you apply the call operation to that object using the parentheses? And if it's true, it will tell you, yeah, you can do so. And of course, it then will always return a value. So for example, we can say callable of print. Well, print is a function, so it is callable, right? You say print parentheses and then maybe something inside the parentheses. So it's true, right? It is a callable. Same thing with a string. Strings have methods. So if you take abc.upper and you put your parentheses, that's going to call the upper method on that string. And it's going to change abc lowercase to abc uppercase. Right? So it is also a callable. String.upper. So this is a little different, you'll notice. In the first example, I had a string instance. Here I've got the string class. And the string class, well, upper isn't bound to the class, right? Upper is bound to the instance, but it's still a callable. We'll see that in detail in later sections on object-oriented programming. Finally, callable. Well, that's callable too, right? Callable is a built-in function, so callable is callable. So that's kind of weird, but that returns true. Now, if you pass something else, like an integer, for example, well, callable if 10 is false. 10 is not callable. You can't say 10 and parentheses. It doesn't do anything. It won't work, right? Same thing if you pass in a string or a list. So there's also a ton of objects that are not callable. So let's see what different types of callables can be. So we've seen already a lot of them. Built-in functions like print, len, and callable. All these are callables. They're just regular built-in functions. Built-in methods, right? Like the string dot upper or an append method on a list, right? Then you have user-defined functions, things that we define using def and lambda expressions. These are all callables as well. Our own methods, right, in classes, things are bound to an object, right, either bound to an instance or bound to a class. Those are also callables, but they're called methods. Then we have classes. Classes are callables, right? This is kind of the first one that's a little bit different than a function. It's a class. Well, when we create a new instance of a class, what do we say? We say my class, and then we have these parentheses. We're calling my class, and we're passing in potentially some parameters. So what happens during that whole process? Well, the first thing that Python does is it actually calls the done the new method that's defined in my class. Now, you may or may not have defined the new method, but if you haven't, then the parent object like you know will will actually have the new method and so it will know how to instantiate that now you can override this done the new method and we'll get into that detail later on in this course on object oriented programming but for now just realize that if you call my class right it is callable you can call it and it will actually call this method now this method will actually create the new object then it will call the done the init method which is what we've been using so far to instantiate our object. Well, it's not actually instantiating the object. It's initializing the object. By the time init is reached, the object's actually already been created and it's passed in to this self parameter here. And then it returns the object finally as a reference, of course. Now, class instances can also be callables. So once you have an instance, let's say of my class, it may be callable and we'll see how to do that. But essentially, you just have to implement the done the call method. And we'll see that in the code. And then you have also other things like generators and coroutines and asynchronous generators. They're all kind of related to generators. And we'll see that later on in this course as well. 
but those are also callables. All right, so let's switch to some code and let's take a look at this in action. It'll make a lot more sense. So let's look at callable, the callable built-in function. So we can look at whether something is callable by simply passing it to this callable built-in function. For example, print. Well, print is callable, right? We can call print. Print, hello, print, you know, we can call print basically with this call operation, right? This call operator. These parentheses here is saying call the object immediately preceding it. And we can pass in parameters. We don't have to, right? We can just call print by itself or just print a blank line or we can pass in some parameter or parameters. Now, every callable returns a value. So, in fact, the print actually returns a value. Let's take a look. So we'll do the same thing. And then we're also going to print the result out. So we should get two lines here. And you'll notice the first one is hello, because that's what the print statement does. It just prints hello to the console. And here we printed the result. The result was none. So it still returned a value. Yes, it's none. And that's perfectly okay. That's legitimate but it's still returning something. And you're always guaranteed that if something is callable, it will return a value, which means you can always assign it to some variable on the left-hand side. Now, this works the same way with methods. For example, let's say we have a list, one, two, three. Now, we have the append method on lists, so we can check if it's callable. And the answer is true. It is callable, right? Because we can say l.append, let's say four. And then I'm also going to assign whatever it returns to the result. And let's see what it does. So here we're going to print L and then we're going to print the result. Okay. So as you can see, we printed L out. So L has that element added in at the end, right? Appended. And then the return was actually none. Now other methods do return something. Like if I have a string, string equals ABC. And let's say I want to check if S dot upper, right? The upper property, the upper uh, method, sorry, is callable. And the answer is true. Now, keep in mind, I am not saying S dot upper and then calling it, right? This is not the same thing. If I call callable on that, what am I going to get? I'm going to get a false because what is the result of S dot upper? Well, it's a string, right? So if I do that, I get false. So be careful with that. We're testing to see if something is callable, but don't call it because then you're testing what the return value of that is. And that may not be callable. Okay, so let's take a look at the result of s.upper, right? So now we're calling it and let's go ahead and print the result. And the result is just the uppercase variant of s, right? So that's again the return value in this case the return value is something we you know we actually want to work with the return of print yeah probably not now classes are also callables so for example let's look at a built-in class let's say from decimal let's look at the decimal class import decimal so let's import the decimal class from the decimal module and you'll see that decimal is indeed callable. And yes, we know that because we can say a equals decimal and now we can call it, right? We use the call operator and we can pass in a argument that's going to be the value that it's going to use for initializing it. And we have that a is the decimal object, 10.5. And you'll notice that the result of calling this decimal class was the object itself, was the instance, right? So it returned something and the return is something we're interested in. It's the actual instance of decimal, right? Type A is decimal. So A is, uh, the decimal is callable. Now, is A callable? And the answer is no, it's not callable. But some classes can be callable. Well, all, sorry, all classes are callable. Some objects, some instances of classes can actually also be callable. They don't have to. In this case, obviously, it's not, right? The instance of the decimal class is not callable. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at how we might do that ourselves. Let's go ahead and create a class. Let's say my class. And we're going to def init. So we're going to create an initializer. And let's say the initializer will take a parameter x and will default it to zero. 
And here we're going to do something. You probably wouldn't want to do this in general in your code, but I just want to show where something is running. So I'm going to say print initializing. And then I'm going to actually create an instance variable, an instance property called counter. And I'm going to set that equal to whatever was passed in for X. Okay. So this is my class. It's a callable now, right? My class is callable because my class has this new method that we haven't over, you know, we didn't do an override of this method, but it is there, right? It exists. And then we also implemented the init method. So now we can say a equals my class and we pass in maybe an initial value of 100, right? So you can see it printed initializing. It ran the dunder init method and our counter property, our counter attribute has a value of 100 as expected. But a is callable or not? Well, it's not callable, right? Just like we saw the decimal object wasn't callable. Our object here, our instance of my class is not callable. However, we can make it callable by doing the following. So I'm just going to copy paste the code and let's change that. Let's say def dunder call. Okay, so we're going to implement the special method called call. Now it is an instance method, so we need to uh, use the instance here as the first variable. And then we'll use another parameter as well, some x, and we'll set its default to 1. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to say updating counter. And we are going to update the counter and we're going to make it equal to itself plus whatever X was. Okay. So now we have this my class, this new version of my class. So let's create an instance of it. Right. So here we're calling my class. My class is callable. And of course it ran the initializing, right? It ran this init uh, method. Now, how about this done call? How are we going to call that? Well, there's one way of doing it, and we'll see this again in more detail later on in the course, but one way of doing it would be to do it this way. So my class dot dunder call, right? This is just a function here defined in my class, right? But what does it expect? Well, it expects the object that we're interested in. So in this case, B. And then it expects this X value here. Well, it doesn't expect it, but it will take it if we provide it, right? It has a default. So I'm going to provide it though and set it equal to 10. So if we do that, you can see that it called this method, right? This updating counter. And if we look at B dot counter, then indeed we have that it's equal to 10. Our initial value was zero. We added 10 to that. Okay. But you can certainly call this, call it this way. And by the way, any uh, instance method can be called this way. And we'll see that later on in the, in the course as well. But really the way that we need to call this, or we should call this, is much simpler. If we look at whether B is now callable, the answer now is true, right? Before, our instance of my class was not callable. But because we defined this special method here called under call, it became callable, which means that now we can just say B, we can call B, right? We can apply this call operation to B. And you can see it ran this under call method for us. If we look at b dot counter, it's now 11, right? Or we could say b 100, and now it ran again, and we can look at the new counter value, and that's 111. So this is how you can make instances of your classes callables as well. So as you can see, it's not just functions that are callables, right? Yes, at the end of the day, a function is run, right? At the end of the day, something is going to run a function somewhere. If you're, you know, running a, uh, if you're calling, my, you know, a, a class like my class, it's going to run the new and the init methods. If you're calling an instance of your class, it's going to try and call the call method, you know, the Dunder versions of those things. So at the end of the day, yes, it's running a function. It's making a call. So you can think that, hey, everything is a function, but they're not quite the same, right? My class is not a function, right? What's the type of my class? It's a type, right? So the type of my class is a type, right? Same thing if you look at the type of decimal, right? It's a type as well. That's not a function. That's not the same thing, but it is still a callable. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.